Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Jan Pennington. I am the founder of Healthy Hands Cooking. Welcome to our virtual holiday luncheon this year. We have opened this up to um, instructors, members, you know, some people who might be interested in a career in um, teaching kids cooking classes. And I really just wanted this to be a celebration for all of the challenges many of us have overcome this year, especially as we worked our way through COVID and are still working our way through COVID and um, having on-site classes, virtual classes. We just did a whole gamut of things this year. So a very, very warm welcome to you. Uh, if we haven't met personally, this is a, a great opportunity so you can see my face, hear my voice. And, and meet some of the members on our team as well, like Rachel Bloom-Smith, who um, is our support person who also does all of our training, onboarding. She helps with social media um, and a lot of other tasks that I, I ask her to help with. So she's kind of our technical guru, and I'm just kind of like leading the way with um, some of the things we're introducing to our instructors. So first of all, I just wanted to, sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes we get so busy with the holidays, we forget that we just sometimes need time to reflect and to give ourselves the opportunity to think about what happened over the course of the last year. So whether you were teaching classes or you weren't teaching classes or you took a pause for classes um, or you're thinking about teaching classes maybe coming in 2022, I wanna congratulate you for the mindset for pushing through because business, regardless of the business that you're in, mindset is so important and so critical to the success of your business, to your daily life, to just getting through some of those hurdles that can be very, very challenging. And I know that we had talked a lot about COVID protocols when we um, first started in 2020. And there was a time where classes were completely, onsite classes were completely shut down. So for uh, many of our instructors, we had to figure out new ways to um, do our business. And many of us jumped into the technology world with trying to figure out how to do virtual classes, online classes. We're learning new programming like using Facebook Live or like Zoom, um, Zoom video like this one here where we can teach classes and still continue to move and maintain our businesses and move them along forward. We also spent a lot of spent time um, on social media this past year. I, I, I took a look at some of the courses that people were involved in and taking and trying to learn how do you stand out online? How do you um, create effective Instagram accounts or Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts? And how do you reach your find your audience, reach your audience? and send your message to your audience. So congratulations to any of the instructors who took um, 2021 and used it as a valuable time to improve their skills, maybe to learn some new skills and to not quit because quitting is never the answer to success in, in business. And as tough as things can be sometimes, you pushing forward and learning new skills, it was a great time for you to do that. We also introduced some more freedom and flexibility. One of the things about Healthy Hands Cooking is that we have this really incredible software platform, but 2021 was really a, a mind shift for the company as well, because we really wanted to become the brand behind your brand and start to make your brand more forward facing than the Healthy Hands Cooking brand. Um, so we've had instructors who have created beautiful logos and have created their own sense of color schemes and their own sense of niches that they teach in. And what they do is use Healthy Hands Cooking tools behind the scenes like lesson plans and recipes and support and instructor calls and templates, legal forms, media forms, all those kinds of things to help bring their brand forward. So we're really excited to see the, um, the instructors that use that. Of course, they can always use just the Healthy Hands Cooking materials anytime, but um, with our logo on it, but it really was a year for us moving forward um, a little bit more with freedom and flexibility for our instructors. And wow, we overcame some amazing challenges together. You know, uh, there were many times that we banded together to help one another and share ideas this year. And I was, I was on the phone with um, one of our instructors, Sharon Pinkney, and she was almost hesitant to ask me to kind of like, can we make our group a little bit more interactive? And I was so thankful for her phone call 
because she really opened my eyes and mind to just the camaraderie that we have in the, and everybody has different ways of doing their business, but by being more open to sharing, we learn so much more from each other. So I'm very, very excited and thankful to just do a shout out to the instructors who did um, guest um, speaking engagements on our Facebook Live inside of our private instructor Facebook group this year. Everybody came to the table very willingly and openly to share some of their own ideas and some of their class themes and how they're running their businesses. Liliana talked um, a lot about, you know, just uh, functional nutrition. A lot of us didn't understand functional nutrition, what that was. She became a board certified functional medicine health coach this year. And she just kind of shared her journey with that. And that was just a very eye opening and inspiring. Um, Natalie Copeland from Flavored Fork in Lexington, South Carolina. You know, she had a great presentation and she really talked about how she was able to connect um, online with various um, gr education groups that were looking for vendors specifically to teach, you know, after school programs. And we're going to talk about some of her successes this year because she's been one of those instructors that just like was pow, stand up, stand out um, successful. And I just want to applaud her and I will share more of, of her story with you in this presentation. Ashton Chapman, dad with a dish, he's up in South Carolina as well. He's in the Chapin area um, and he's had um, some, some successful classes and he's been running some camps. Karina Danielson, she ended up talking just about um, how to become the local expert uh, cooking instructor in your area and who to connect with. Karina Danielson is one of those instructors that is like network extraordinaire for her um for just for her personality if you ever get the chance to meet her she's super engaging super exciting exciting um rachel smith shared all about media on um, social media and how to run social media and michelle kern spent some time with us and there's one more here let me see if i can see the picture nope sorry i can't see who that picture is i can't remember who that is behind but thank you to the all of the instructors who donated their time and expertise to share in our Facebook group this year. It was really valuable, exciting. I'm so thankful for that as we all are. You know, I was thinking about, you know, 2021 and 2022, and I'd like for you, if you have a pen and a, and a piece of paper with you, or even just in upstairs up here in your, in your mind, if you could think about one personal and one professional win you had in 2022, and maybe just like jot it down on a piece of paper, because um, at the end of this, we're going to open this up for uh, chats with everybody. And I, I, Natalie, and I would love to see um, and hear your story of this year. For me, I'm going to share some personal things today that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think are very valuable. I'll just do my little sharing now, and then we'll do the rest of the sharing at the end. But um, many of you don't know this about, about me, but for my personal win this year, I was deal I've been dealing with some very critical health issues for the last six years. And what I mean by that is that I had such excessive abdominal pain. It started in December of 2014. And at that time, I was very active. I was playing on two tennis teams. I was had a personal trainer. I was, I've always been into sports and athletics and, and working out. And December 2014 came and my abdominal pain was so bad and severe, I could barely get out of bed many days. And I suffered with it for three years to 2017, December, 2017. I went to so many specialists. I went to GI specialists. I went to um, gyno specialists. I went to uh, urinary tract. I mean, every single organ that is from between your rib cage and your belly button, I went to, and nobody could figure it out. I had surgeries, I had medicines. I was misdiagnosed probably 10 times and given the wrong treatments and the wrong things. In December, 2017, I had a very bad outbreak of diverticulitis and I was hospitalized over Christmas. So my family had tickets to Canada to see our family in Canada. They left me behind on an IV in a hospital for three days. And I recovered from that. And I ended up having several more, probably five to six more diverticulitis outbreaks um, over the course of the next three years. And finally, we found, I had given up hope, but finally, my husband had found um, a group called the Cleveland Clinic in Weston, Florida to take a look at me. And they accepted me as a patient 
And I went down there and sure enough, yes, they, they realized that part of my pain was this diverticulitis disease that really the only way they could fix my severity was to do something called a resection, a colon resection. And it was supposed to be like a four inches that you take out of your colon, you kind of attach it back together. And, 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 but the surgeon said, Jan, I cannot promise you that I can fix the other pain that you've had for six or seven years. I just don't know what that is. I can't figure it out. While I was under the operating, uh, on the operating table, and I should have been there for an hour, it turned into a six hour surgery. And the doctor ended up having to remove 18 inches of my colon because it had completely calcified and died. And it's not something that shows up on tests. I've had so many colonoscopies that my, my colon on the inside looks so healthy other than a little piece of diverticulitis. Um, I've had MRIs, CAT scans, blood tests. I mean, you, the gamut of tests that you can do. And it's almost like the corrosion of, and the deadness of my colon was on the outside of my colon, not the inside, which is why nobody could figure out what was going on. It's the actually same disease that Elvis Presley died of. And without fixing it, it could have been life-threatening. I ended up having the surgery um, and recovering from it. And I have to say that was April 12th of this year. Uh, I was on my 56th birthday and I came out of that surgery. And after I recovered for about three months, I, I can finally like do things. I'm walking my dogs and I'm playing pickleball and I'm riding a bike and I'm doing things that I never thought I could do ever again because the pain was so severe. The reason I wanted to share that with you today is because there might be other people out there with abdominal pain that they just can't figure out what's wrong with them. And maybe my story and my journey can help, you know, open the eyes to somebody else who might hear this message and maybe just think, well, maybe I need to have someone take a look at that possibility. So I wanted to share that, but I'm on the mend. And it's been, like I said, six to seven years of very, very difficult journey for me physically. But that is my spectacular win in 2021. And I'm so thankful um, for the healing of that part of my body. Um, my professional win is, you know, this year we spent some time on our software platform for our, for our instructors. Every year I like to try to um, solicit ideas and uh, from our instructor base to see how can we make this even better? How do we, what can we add to our platform or tweak in our platform? So we made lots of nice changes to our platform that were upgrades, things like adding a birthday date to your uh, registration form so that when kids sign up for your classes, you can collect birthday dates and maybe send them a birthday card or su suggest a birthday cooking party for them when they're when their birthdays come up, adding note sections, adding ways to um, connect with parents where they can actually send a physical note through the registration portal directly to you. So if they have concerns about their child or their or allergies or whatever, they can elaborate more in the note section. We, um, we changed up our recipes the way they read and we upgraded um, some of our other content. So it was just a really good year for a uh, professional win for upgrading and adding and tweaking our platform. Number four, may you be encouraged by momentum going forward and it's a perfect time to celebrate your successes. You know, this is all about our instructors and they are so passionate about what they do. This is from Christine Fujitani. Christine is in um, California, and California was a very, very strict state for shutting down for COVID in 20, I can keep my dates right, 2020. And finally, she said, woohoo, I'm excited to begin my first in-person cooking class um, starting in the end of July. And it was just a thing we wanted to celebrate with her because it was kind of like everybody's businesses were a little bit on standstill for almost that full first year of COVID where we just were all trying to figure out how do we do this and how do we maintain our businesses and how do we hang on and Christine even applied for some grant money that she shared with us and she um, was able to get a little bit of money to help even just cover the rest of her costs for running her business for the year. So hats off to Christine and all the other instructors who stuck with it through 2020 and now in 2021 um, because their businesses are starting to rebound. And I'm really excited about 2022. And I'm going to share that with you as well. And why I think we are in a very, we're poised for a very um, growing business um, area in 2022. We also spent time spreading health and joy. And we talk about our instructors being 
more than just bodies in a classroom. We are teachers in a way, even though we're not certified as school teachers, we are instructors with our passion of cooking. We inspire the children and we absolutely shone online this year. And there's no way we could have done this without the brilliant help of Rachel Smith, who spent time creating graphics for our instructors that they could just download and grab some content. Rachel took time to write stories and nutritional information and um, did the graphics and made it so easy for people just to click and go if they wanted to post something to their timelines or to their Instagram or to their Facebook. It's really it, you know, social media is just, it's a lot, it can take a lot of effort and a lot of work and, and, and it, it becomes easier when you have some tools that are just provided for you that you can edit yourself, that you can throw out there and personalize yourself. So hats off to Rachel. She did an amazing job. I'm so thankful for the help that she provided this year and just really appreciate everything she does in the social media world. May you find your reasons for joy this season. We want to celebrate with you. 2022 is almost here. Um, and I guess my question to you is, are you going to be bold enough to go forward? I mean, if you made it through 2021, <laughs> you, you, you're going to be on the way up in 2022. I just, I, I wanted to highlight this one particular instructor because, um, and I know I have not caught everything on this page, but Natalie Copeland of Lexington, South Carolina you are absolutely my idol. I just have been following you and watching your success this year. And you have just put one foot forward each and every turn you go. Um, on the left in that yellow little um, square box, you can see Natalie um, got, got a nice um, uh, offering with a Girl Scout um, troop. It's the South Carolina Mountains to Midlands region. And she's teaching um, cooking for badges classes. So Healthy Hands Cooking has developed seven cooking badges that align with the Girl Scouts badges. And so Natalie was able to, um, to connect with Girl Scouts and, and become a community partner with them. Um, she was awarded an after school program, which we're just so thankful for. And I, I, I think it might be more than one after school program. I'm not 100% sure. But with um, Richland, too, she's running an after school program. And as I had mentioned, she had talked about in one of the, the guest speaker conversations how she was able to get some grant money. Um, from some of these school districts who are looking specifically for cooking classes. And so that's how her business is being funded through um, grants like 21st Century and other school grants, Department of Education, things like that. So there definitely is money out there for after school programs. And ours is just so unique because we do teach nutrition, wellness, cooking, life skills, things that children need as they grow older. Um, I posted a couple of pictures from her classes here. She had a super successful class with cooking for sin. Oh, okay. Yes. One school year this year and another next year. Yay. Congrats, Natalie. Um, cooking with Santa was a new one for her this year. She partnered with a rec center with um, that particular class. It was sold out, of course. How much fun would it be to cook with Santa? The beautiful thing about our instructors is that they have the freedom and flexibility to kind of add their own unique uniqueness to their classes, how they want to run it, how they want to add special guests like Santa. What a great idea that was. I'm just really excited about what you did with that, Natalie. And um, so much fun for the kids as well. I mean, how much fun would that be? But not only that, so, oh, she also um, started a spring kids club. So, oh no. So, yeah. Thank you for your advice on the kids club, Michelle Kern. So on the bottom left where the hearts are, she, um, Natalie says, I set up clubs for spring and fall and got them approved for two rec centers for 2022. So how cool is it that you can, I mean, a cooking club is the same as a cooking class. It's just, you know, a different name for it, but basically it's a series of classes. So you just call it a club because you might be consistent with it. Like maybe every Tuesday or every Wednesday or every Thursday. So you can call your classes, whatever you want. And a cooking club is just one way you can kind of differentiate your services to another instructor. And then she's also giving back like this lasagna love um, is an organization that helps neighbors in need who are maybe a little bit um, struggling financially, who may need some assistance, who just kind of someone to let them know that they're cared for and loved. And I know Natalie is also involved, I believe, Natalie, is it the American Heart or Diabetic Association, maybe Diabetic Association? She does classes, um, health classes with them as well. And I just, I don't know, I just, I, this is like AHA, so American Heart, Heart Association. I just have to give you a big shout out, Natalie, because I mean, just 
unbelievable job. Yes, Hart, unbelievable job you did this year and have been just putting one foot forward. And thank you so much because what you do matters so much and makes a difference. Everything we all do makes so much difference. So thank you for your passion and dedication. I hope your business will be full of surprises and cheers simply because you deserve the best that life has to offer. Look at this. How sweet is this? This is um, Nicole Henry. She's based in Illinois. This is um, her teaching some children at Chandler Newberger Center, I think it's called. She says this was the last day of the, seat, of the session. Every class is filled with tons of personality and skill. She's got other things that she offers with her business as well. So she's Chickie's Kitchen Creations. So she offers healthy hands cooking classes to her students, young students, but she's also a chef and caterer. So she's added other components to her business model, which allow her to expand and reach adults and um, offer, you know, served food choices. She's got it all. So I just love her enthusiasm, her energy, her participation, her great pictures. She's always got fun things to share. So please keep sharing, please, Nicole, because they inspire all of us and um, just so much fun. So thank you for that. The kids are adorable. And May 2020, 2022 be a season of new ideas and new opportunities. Um, I just grabbed the snapshot because this is one of our instructors, Michelle Kern. She's up in New Jersey area. And she posted this maybe three to four weeks ago, but she's already forward thinking into 2022. It's a spring kids cooking club that she offers and private cooking lessons and scout badge classes and summer camps and birthday parties. And for anybody who's on this call that is not a member within our membership area, these are all lesson plans and tools and recipes that our instructors can just go into their back office and download and grab and be ready to go. They don't have to recreate the wheel. We've got games and lesson plans and activities for all ages. And it is just um, so exciting to be able to see these lesson plans in action in different parts of the country. Oh, wow, we have somebody here from South Africa. Welcome, welcome, Dora, welcome. So that is very exciting. And I just wanna give a shout out to Michelle Kearns for that because I think that she has it right. In this business, it's really important to actually promote yourself three to six months ahead of time of your schedule. So believe it or now, I know it's the holiday season and we're thinking Christmas and we're thinking New Year's, but really our instructors are already planning for spring, Easter, St. Patty's Day um, classes and already getting them scheduled and booked. So that's how far in advance we get them online and start promoting them so that we ensure as full classes as possible. Attitude is altitude. And this is just so important. We, I mentioned Karina Danielson already, but this woman, if you knew her, you would not believe the struggles that she has been through personally this year. Talk about my struggles. They're nothing compared to what she's been through. But look at her optimism and look at her sweet notes. She says, I've been listening to positive affirmations as I sleep at night. Let me just kind of move this because I can't see it. Um, today, completely out of the blue, I got a call from a company that has 13 schools in my area. They expressed an interest in having me do their summer camps, and I'm so excited. And something like that is just really thrilling to me when we are um, being more positive about our mindsets. She also said she also does um, farmers market um little farmer's market things here where she goes and she lets kids sample foods and she engages with parents. And she says, these two sweethearts visit my booth every time I'm at the farmer's market. They are both so eager to sample and try new things. Today it was pimento cheese, hummus, and guacamole. The little one liked the guacamole so much that she started dancing with a huge smile on her face. Now that is why we do what we do and you are making a difference in people's lives. So attitude is altitude. Yes, it sure is. And I just love that Karina is able to um, even put some of her own issues, not issues, but challenges aside and really focus on, on these students. And I'm just very thrilled to have her as part of our instructor base. So Karina, shout out to you. And in the coming new year, here's what 2022 can bring. We talked about, well, what is 2022? Like COVID is, and we're hearing Omicron, we're hearing more viruses, we're hearing more, faster spread and all of that. But I will say the one thing we did do right with this company and with our instructors is from the get-go, we implemented 
for our hands-on classes, we implemented very safe protocols for working with students. So we had them obviously sign in with waivers, temperatures, masks, separation by at least six feet, um, everything we could do to keep the kids safe. We even started to work with food stations instead of having food products in the middle of a, the room where they would all go together to grab what they needed they would um we would actually start to separate out their little ingredients and bring them to them so they didn't have to congregate anywhere close to one another so we did lot put lots of protocols in place and we did create a waiver that instructors can just download from their back office make it super easy and we had some protocols that we taught them how to how to follow the cdc guidelines within their area so we've had knock on wood we've had no incidents we've had safe classes for those instructors that could not physically teach, they had the option of virtually teaching this year. And although it's a little scary to learn new technology, many of them, you know, through just sheer determination, trial and error, and talking in our group and sharing in our group, um, were able to overcome some of those fears and were able to teach those classes. So kudos to you if you were doing virtual classes and um, made it through that. 2022. So what are we talking about here? Man, I, you can just Google it. I mean, I just grabbed a few little snippets just to kind of share with you because I was just so excited to see kind of where I think this is all going to head. But um, according to, let me just move this down a little bit. According to the study, 70% of families are cooking more during the pandemic and 60% are making more meals from scratch. Half of the parents surveyed are involved uh, are involving their kids in cooking more often while 55% of families are eating with their children more regularly. So this was a study that was done online and um, it was just a Google search. You can just go, you can just Google it and it'll pop right up. It's one of the top ones. Cooking with kids at home saw a boom during the lockdown and here's why it needs to continue. That was just a news article that I had picked up um, from another headline. Kids who cook are hungrier for healthy food choices. That's another benefit by what you know, of what we're doing. We are teaching children what whole foods are, how to cook from scratch, how, how not to use a packaged mix or a box or unhealthy food preservatives and chemicals and stuff in their food. Everything we do is, is, is whole foods cooking and teaching them how to cook. And you guys probably know my story about this, but when I started teaching children, gosh, eight years ago, fee-based classes outside of my home, I, I had a little boy who thought mashed potatoes came from a box. He didn't even know that they could come from a physical potato or, or how to make mashed potatoes from physical potatoes. So there's a huge gap and a huge need out there for teaching children food sources and where it's grown and how it's grown and how to prepare it. And, and here's another um, article that I just kept picked up that more kids um, take to cooking during the pandemic. It is something that a school um, is implementing. In fact, I got a call out of the blue last week. I actually got an email out of the blue last week from a nonprofit organization who is back in schools in 2022, and they already have 11 after school programs at 11 different schools. And they wanted to know if I could connect our instructors with those schools for their after school programs to be enrichment instructors, where they'll, our instructors will go in a couple of days a week for an hour, let's say Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, as part of their program um, to teach the kids culinary skills because parents are asking for it. Um, students love it. It's just one of those things that is just gonna continue to grow. And uh, we don't even have enough instructors to fill this particular um, customer's needs, which is very sad on my part because um, I'd like to see every instructor um, having after school programs and making a difference in those programs, but we will see and hopefully 2022 will bring those new instructors we need. Um, in particular in these areas, it's um, five schools in Atlanta, it is five schools in South Carolina in more rural type areas and for our South Carolina instructors I can talk to you more about those opportunities, and then one in Charlotte area which I believe Tiori might be up there so I may be able to reach out to her but. Um, so that's where that is. For those of you who are on this call, we're gonna wrap this up and then open this up for discussion and, and have a little cheers together. Um, but for those of you that are, you're not really sure if you wanna become a cooking instructor or about our membership, just feel free to um, reach out to support by email. We're happy to, Rachel or myself are happy to get back with you with details and give you 
um, get online with you or just talk on the phone with you or email or what, however you're comfortable. Um, we do have a special, normally our certification to become a cooking instructor, which is a business certification to teach you how to properly set up your permits, your licenses, your background checks, your food safety, your food handling, your um, allergy, food allergy information, all that kind of stuff is a structured business cooking instructor certification program. It's normally 997. It's 497 till the end of the year. So if that's something that interests you, please um, take a look at our website and get more information. And if you're already teaching classes, but you just think you want maybe more of a community around you and you want access to tools and lesson plans and birthday party packages and things like that just um, look at our membership. It's $75 a month. You get a microsite that you can personalize. It's, all the hosting fees are covered. So there's no extra cost. We don't take any piece of your sales. It's not like going on Eventbrite or something where they take a portion of your sales. You keep hundred percent of your sales. Um, you get all the uh, lesson plan. You get the lesson plans packages, a certain amount to start with. You get over 550 commercial use recipes and that you can search on them by ingredient or by age or by appliance or however you want to do that. Lots of great content, marketing tools, business tools, templates, legal forms, instructor support, whatever, community, it's back there. So if you already have a cooking business, that might be a great way for you to, um, to take a look at that. In New York, how are the opportunities in New York? Actually, we do have a few instructors in New Jersey, and I, we just added one new instructor in New York recently, um, but she's booked. So I, I, I think it's just a matter of just finding their, your partners and your facilities and, and where the need is. Once you're kind of there, I find that we've had instructors with us for almost seven years now. They're kind of with the same either parks and rec or schools or, or churches or wherever they started their business. They're kind of just still there. So once you find some good partners, just hang on to them. You just keep going. Girl Scouts is a great, a great, they actually have their headquarters in New York. So I would maybe check out some of the regional or, or, or corporate opportunities with Girl Scouts if I was doing the business there. And then cheers to a wonderful Christmas and a happy, healthy, and safe new year. I have my little champagne flute here. I don't know if you're having lunch with us today or you're just having a coffee or you're just uh, having a little bit of a, a celebration, but I just wanted to say, I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Oh my gosh, you just got through this so well. Oh, Natalie's got her little cheers glass. Cheers to everybody. And um, I'm going to open this up so we can have a conversation. Just, I think all you need to do is unmute yourself if you'd like to share a personal win and a professional win from this year. Would love to hear you and cheers to you. And I'm going to, if I can figure this out, open this up and unmute everybody. All right. Hang on one second, y'all. Let's see. Ask all to unmute. Play lock. Enable the unmute themselves. Oh, you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself. I don't have to do anything. So if you'd like to participate and have a little cheer, then please uh, feel free to do that and just unmute yourself on your phone or on your computer. And we'd love to hear from you. Cheers. I'll go first. Can you hear me, Jan? Oh, I see her. I can see you talking. Let me see. Hang on. Are you un unmuted, Rach? Yeah. You should can be unmuted now. Oh, Christine can hear me good. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Cheers to everyone. I just have my little smiley mug with my decaf coffee. <laughs> and, um, thank you so much, Jan, for putting this together today. Um, it's always so nice to see you and talk to you and hear your words of encouragement for everybody. Um, I can share some wins if you'd like. Would love that. Yes, absolutely. Um, my personal win probably sounds, it's not overcoming any health issues or, you know, anything major, but I kept my family healthy. <laughs> um, you know, families intact, healthy, um, relatively happy for the most part with two grownups, you know, working from home and homeschooling. Um, my daughter who finally made it off to kindergarten. So uh, that's been a huge accomplishment for me and our family. Um, 
my professional wins, I have a couple of different ones. Um, the first one is just working with the community partners in my local area. So some of you know who have been on here for a while. Um, I partnered with a cheerleading camp in 2020 to do in-person classes um, as sort of a supplement to the cheerleading that they were doing. And the owner of that cheerleading studio brought me back in this year, sort of out of the blue. Um, I had very few plans sort of laid out for what I was doing for summer camps and things. And she reached out and said, we just loved having you last year and we'd love to bring you back. Are you available? And I was. So I did four weeks of that uh, cheerleading camp. And then I also worked with my local township as an extracurricular for their um, full day, like week long summer camp. So I was brought in as you know an extracurricular person for an entire day on one Friday I did three back-to-back -back large groups with some very simple recipes um, and they paid me like almost the full rate for what I would charge for an hour per each kid um, you know for um, you know for more than what I would uh, normally with normally make with a community partner um they were just looking to bring someone in who had expertise and the kids loved it i got a boost on my social media um i got a boost with my mailchimp subscribers um and that was that was really nice for me i really needed those <laughs> those wins for the summertime um and for 2022 i'm really uh, you know, I've been doing a lot with the social media for Healthy Hands Cooking, and I, I sort of put that as a win to sort of increasing the engagement in our group and, um, you know, uh, working with new members and our page followers, sort of increase engagement on our main Healthy Hands Cooking page. Um, I hope to continue doing that in 2022. Um, and, uh, you know, amping up the options I have for a more private uh, private classes, birthday parties, things like that. Things are still sort of slow going in my area. Um, mm -hmm. Finding a community partner has been tough. So that those private options um, are probably where it's going to be for me for 2022. And you're in Maryland, Maryland, right? Maryland? Yes. Yep. Maryland. Yeah. Yep. Near DC. Yes. Awesome. Oh, those are great wins. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Yes. Fantastic, Rach. Thank yeah. you. Who else is going to go? Natalie? Natalie, we all know her wins. Hey, can you all see me? I'm not sure. Hey. Yes. Okay, so I'm just taking a little quick break from work, but I do want to say before I forget, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. And um, this year, yes, has been, been pretty good. I think once I kind of got my footing, I was off and rolling. So this year I have, this whole year, I've taken it as, as a win. Um, I've had a couple of additional meetings at, with other people at a family life center and with um, a school district. And looks like I'm gonna be doing some things for them. Um, I know the family life center is some stuff that I'm gonna be doing through the American Heart Association. However, um, the guy wanted, even more things. So a lot of what will be done first, I know, is their Valentine's Day cooking class for kids that they wanted. Um, and so I'll be doing that, you know, as a HHC class. And um, the other thing that he actually wants is a cooking competition between the churches in the area. So I'm looking forward to that, although I think that's a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to that. And I may be following the HHC um, platform for that, like a chopped thing, but we're, we're in the process of putting that together. And he's hoping that if we stream it live on Facebook also, that we'll be able to do this fairly regularly between the churches. So he's all excited. So I think this is going to be a really good uh, event. And with the school district, this is another school district. This lady also has a lot of ideas for the school and for her personal daycare center and church and all these other things. So there's a lot of opportunities for me to bring in HHC, the Heart Association, just, just a plethora of things. My calendar for next year is pretty much full with recurring 
activities, which is which is what I wanted. So um, although I'm gonna reach out to Jan about what she was talking about, the rural school opportunities, like mm -hmm. I have the time, I don't know hey. where. Awesome, you know, great. I, I tell my husband, he was like, how are you gonna do all that? And I said, I don't know, we just, I figured it out <laughs> once I start going. So, um, but I think the funny thing to me is that when I met Jan and she was asking like what I wanted to do, and all that, I was more interested in the classes for adults. And it's so funny that with COVID and all, as we have had to pivot and pivot back, that my entire <laughs> my entire client base now has pretty much been all kids. So <laughs> that has been the, the funniest thing, but it has also been, I think, the most enjoyable thing. And it has given me a chance to use more of the lesson plans and recipes for the kids. I don't have to think, I can just pick them out and, and keep it moving. So there will be some adult classes, but it like I said, it's just all about the kids now and their little faces lighting up. That has been one of the biggest wins, I think, for me personally and, and professionally. Oh my gosh, Nellie, that's so exciting. I can just see all those churches. That's going to be fun. If all that those churches is. are connected and you're on Facebook Live and everything, that's going to blow up. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping awesome. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, once again, I figured out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Is Ashton on today? I don't see Ashton. I saw him kind of recurring. We've been having some private messages recently about some other things. So I don't know if he's here today, but I think he's going to catch up with the re recording. Okay. Cool. I know I did send him a re, uh, some information about the Girl Scouts, and I think he's reached out to them as well. Great, great, awesome. That's awesome. Oh, and let me thank also Michelle Kearns while I'm on here, because she has been a big resource for me. If I need to know how to do anything, I ask Michelle, and she is quick and eager to help. And, and I'm honestly using some of her ideas, her flyers. I see, you know, I don't really do a lot. I do have a lady that um, puts those together for me, but I'll say, I'll give her what I need. I say, make it look something like this. This is kind of what I'm talking about. So Michelle has been a big help to me this year. I'm so thankful to hear that. Yeah. She's been with us for probably six years now. So she's definitely a veteran at this. So she knows what she's doing. So I'm very thankful for that. Yes. That's just part of the benefit of being part of a community. I know you're in South Carolina, she's in New Jersey and you know, it's just, a, we can help each other. That's, I love that about this business. Yes. So, all right. I, if, does anybody else have anything else they'd like to share or? I see your picture, Christine. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hi everyone. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I just want to say uh, happy holidays to you all. And um, this um, this has been a challenging year, just like for the rest of you and everyone in my family also is healthy. And um, I think the thing that I, because I started with HHC knowing that I was going to be a part-time instructor um, and knowing because of my time with my kids and trying to prioritize and I just wanted supplemental income, but it's still um, it's still been really fun to just uh, really learn more about uh, how to run a business and to be able to make an impact, especially um, when everything shut down and we had to switch to virtual. I don't I don't know. I felt like I was making a special contribution to my community by being able to offer virtual classes and. Um, when kids couldn't take any in-person classes, they could still take some healthy cooking classes. And I think this summer um, was probably one of my most challenging because I had three kids with special needs. Um, mm. But <laughs> we were able to make it uh, through. And um, I think that this is probably the most number of students that I had that I had in the summer that also continued into the school year. Um, I do have um, like, yeah, I'd say like 70 something percent of my students are from the summer, summer camps. Um, and lately I've been getting a lot more contacts from people just calling me up 
just saying, oh, hey, I noticed you and I wanted to know um, if I could have, if you were willing to teach this or that, or um, I had a local school contact me and wanted me to teach them after school. And, and um, they were really excited about my program. In the end, I ended up turning them down just because of my crazy pick up and drop off schedule for my kids at, at a different location. Um, but still, I was just excited that um, people are noticing me. And just as soon as my time is able to be more flexible, I would be able to take on more clients. But just having, I guess, another uh, win for me is just on Google Business. I was like, whoa, there was like 800 views or something like one month. And so I thought, wow, that's really remarkable. Like. Um, yeah, I just feel like I'm learning a lot because it used to be, I think it was like 30 views or something like that. Um, but I mean, I still have a lot more to grow, but I just feel like I have already been growing a lot. So thanks, Jan, for providing this space and um, to all the other, those of you that are out there too. So take care. Well, that's Bye. a testament. Thank you, Christine. That's a testament to your stick to itness because it's very easy to get discouraged if you don't have classes constantly running and go, I'm just going to pause or I'm just going to quit. But if your momentum stops, your momentum, it's, it's, it's hard to keep pushing that ball up the hill, you know, if you, just, if you decide to stop moving your legs. So kudos to you for continuing just to even get some messages out there online and posting and social media and, and being open to to um, these types of classes. And so it's awesome. And congrats. And I know you're vegetarian cooking. I just wanted to point that out too. You're vegetarian yeah. uh, while cooking and in California. Yes. So, oh, well, you guys, it's so great to see y'all. I'm, um, I'm going to probably end this recording now, but again, I just wanted to wish you all very Merry Christmas, happy holidays, stay safe. Um, stick you know i hope you have a wonderful new year if we don't see or talk to you before then and um, we'll see what 2022 brings us but remain positive and optimistic and i believe that together we can we can make this work very well for the next season coming up so cheers to everybody bye all